What do Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo all have in common with the heroes of ancient myths? What if I told you they are all variants of the same hero? Do you believe that? Joseph Campbell did. He studied myths from all over the world and published a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, retelling dozens of stories and explaining how each represents the monomyth or hero's journey. So what is the hero's journey? Think of it as a cycle. The journey begins and ends in the hero's ordinary world, but the quest passes through an unfamiliar, special world. Along the way, there are some key events. Think about your favorite book or movie. Does it follow this pattern? Status quo, that's where we start. One o'clock, call to adventure. The hero receives a mysterious message, an invitation, a challenge. Two o'clock, assistance. The hero needs some help, probably from someone older, wiser. Three o'clock, departure. The hero crosses the threshold from his normal, safe home and enters the special world and adventure. We're not in Kansas anymore. Four o'clock, trials. Being a hero is hard work. Our hero solves a riddle, slays a monster, escapes from a trap. Five o'clock, approach. It's time to face the biggest ordeal, the hero's worst fear. Six o'clock, crisis. This is the hero's darkest hour. He faces death and possibly even dies, only to be reborn. Seven o'clock, treasure. As a result, the hero claims some treasure, special recognition or power. Eight o'clock, result. This can vary between stories. Do the monsters bow down before the hero, or do they chase him as he flees from the special world? Nine o'clock, return. After all that adventure, the hero returns to his ordinary world. 10 o'clock, new life. This quest has changed the hero. He has outgrown his old life. 11 o'clock, resolution. All the tangled plot lines get straightened out. 12 o'clock, status quo, but upgraded to a new level. Nothing is quite the same once you're a hero. Many popular books and movies follow this ancient formula pretty closely, but let's see how well The Hunger Games fits the hero's journey template. When does Katniss Everdeen hear a call to adventure that gets the story moving? When her sister's name is called from the lottery? How about assistance? Is anyone going to help her on her adventure? Hey Mitch. What about departure? Does she leave her ordinary world? She gets on a train to the capital. Okay, so you get the idea. What do you have in common with Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo? Well, you're human, just like them. The hero's journey myth exists in all human cultures and keeps getting updated because we humans reflect on our world through symbolic stories of our own lives. You leave your comfort zone, have an experience that transforms you, and then you recover and do it again. You don't literally slay dragons or fight Voldemort, but you face problems just as scary. Joseph Campbell said, in the cave you fear to enter lies the treasure you seek. What is the symbolic cave you fear to enter? Auditions for the school play? Baseball tryouts? Love? Watch for this formula in books, movies, and TV shows you come across. You will certainly see it again, but also be sensitive to it in your own life. Listen for your call to adventure. Accept the challenge. Conquer your fear and claim the treasure you seek. And then do it all over again. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks very much. All right. Uh, everybody ready for another day? All right. There was some high school kids here yesterday and they were a little bit louder. Let's try that again. Everybody ready for another day? Okay. All right, great, thanks a lot. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. This is my fourth Hero Roundtable conference. Uh, I got involved with this topic about five years ago when I wrote and narrated that TED Ed video. Um, that snowballed into my first book, uh, Mentoring Teenage Heroes. I saw some of you picked it up at the book table out there. Thank you for your support. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm here today um, talking about this, this subject. And, you know, when I, when I wrote that book, I did so much research. And, read dozens of books, and, and there's one line 
that still haunts me. Right? The, the, the line is, the hero enters the forest alone where there is no path. And, you know, that could be, um, you know, Katniss Everdeen, right, entering the Hunger Games. It could be uh, a knight of the round table going off on a solitary quest. Uh, it could be Moana, right, off on the ocean. Uh, the hero enters the forest alone where there is no path. I'll come back to that image. But first, I want to tell you two stories, true stories, uh, personal stories. Um, first one, uh, a long time ago, when I was a full-time college student and a part-time lovesick poet, uh, I had this friend named Jack. Jack was gunslinger tough. If uh, the Rolling Stones' Keith Richards um, had a secret love child with Jessica Jones, uh, that would be Jack, right? Hard scrabble, uh, you know, born to tramp the open road, busking for his dinner and uh, bumming cigarettes. Uh, you know, a survivor. So I was, I was finishing college in Europe, you know, this suburban snowflake, and he was working at the car wash back home, saving up, and he flew over to, to London to meet me, and um, we were gonna, you know, explore the continent, uh, 20 bucks a day and a Eurail pass. So one night, um, we found ourselves, we messed up the train table the schedules, um, we found ourselves in a, you know, some industrial city at midnight, and the train stops, and we're, we have to spend the night in this train station. It's, it's concrete, outdoors, we're waiting for the next train that rolls in at 6 a.m. Right? So it's, we're just camped out here, um, you know, Jack, me, our, our, our backpacks, and so I'm, I'm gonna go brush my teeth, or dig out, get my toothbrush, and go find the bathroom, and it's, it smells terrible, it's easy to find. Uh, you know, broken sinks, flickering lights, and there's someone getting beaten up over here at the urinals. I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, let's get out of here. And um, I go back and I tell Jack, you know, what I just saw, and, and Jack says, mm, well, none of our business, it's a rough town, just sleep with one eye open. So we kind of wrap our sleeping bags around us and just wait out, the, wait out the night, get on that train, I took off my jacket and I put it over my jacket or my, my backpack to kind of cover the pockets and hide it. And we're just like waiting it out, you know, it's like 3 a.m. Fade out. And I wake up and, you know, the sun's rising and I, here's my backpack or my backpack and where's my, where's my jacket? It's like, but it's, my jacket's gone. How, how is this possible? What, somebody stole my jacket. Jack, you know, uh, what's going on? And I, I look around, so I find the, the train station, the ticket uh, window, and there's a, there's a cop kind of hunched over a space heater in the back, and I explain, oh, my, my jacket, my jacket, someone stole my jacket. Um, you know, call the detectives, begin the investigation. And he just kind of blows me off, he walks right past me. And, and there's this other cop, kind of half carrying this like bloody faced traveler, you know, over to this ambulance, and, and they load him in, and. I'm like, wow, well, they're no help to me. Jack, we gotta go out into the city and find this thief who's wearing my jacket. Jack says to me, Matt, your jacket's gone. So we jump on the next train and I'm sulking over this violation of my human rights. Story number two. A few years later, I'm, uh, I'm married to Jessica. If Captain America had a baby with Florence Nightingale, that would be my wife, Jessie. Uh, Army military police before she became a nurse. So she's pregnant with our second child. Um, we're out on a rare date night. Um, you know, high heels, necktie. Coming out of our parking space in our apartment building and some, around the building, something, something's really wrong. There's a four-lane highway with a car stopped in the middle and kind of cockeyed. And this stop sign to leave is kind of bent over and flapping. Somebody screams and, and runs over to the river. So I jump out and I, I'm looking down and there's this car, like upside down. I'm looking at the bottom of a car, I don't understand. Jesse's next to me, jump in. So, so I jump in. And the, helping to kind of pull it off the, pulling open the door for the driver's side and, and you know, down underwater and he's, he's pulling at his seatbelt and I'm pulling and our hands and, 
and I'm running out of air, and I think, well, he must be running out of air, so I give him a breath of air, he sucks it all out of me, and turns my lungs inside out. Come up, gagging, choking, <gasps> trying to take more air. People are asking, shouting questions at me, I just go back down, and <sighs> kind of working on the seatbelt, and more air, and a couple, three more times, and then finally, he, he pops loose, and we you know, struggle up to the, to the top, and we're sputtering for air, and the wheels are still spinning on the car, and the steam is hissing off the engine block. And then, you know, someone throws a t-shirt down to put on his cut forehead, and it seems like the EMTs are there right away. They lower down a stretcher and strap him in and kind of winch him up. Yeah, intense. So, you know, attending these hero round tables, and participating in the workshops, you know, these two stories kept coming to mind. In that first story, as a young traveler, the lesson that I took away from that was secure your gear. Right? When sleeping in a train station, put your backpack inside your sleeping bag so you don't get robbed. Was that the right lesson? Yeah, no, I got it wrong, you know, right? I mean, here, here was this guy getting beaten up. I, I could have done something. Right, what should I have done? Helped, right? Hulk smash! <laughs> well, okay, maybe not. Maybe not that. Uh, but, you know, I had no problem finding the cops when I was a victim, right? And then the, with the ambulance, the this bloody face, I mean, was that the same guy? Was he you know, lying in his own blood and piss all night? I think so. I could have done something. And, and then this other story, you know, uh, the car flipped over and sort of stunned. Jesse says, jump in, and, you know, I, I helped out. I mean, I've been thinking about these, right? Same person, different responses. You know, one time walked away, one time jumped in, acted like a hero, or did not. Why? I mean, it occurs to me that how we respond, how we act, has a lot to do with who we're with. You know, are, are you running with a tough crowd, watching over your shoulder, looking out for number one? Or are you hanging out with activists and, you know, upstanders? I mean, that's, I think that's why we're all here, right, at this conference, to come together and with people other people who, who bring out the best in us, right? People like Jeremiah Anthony and Caden Bryce, who we heard yesterday, all the speakers from yesterday. People like Matt Langdon and all the people putting this conference together. I mean, let's give a shout out to the volunteers here, right on, right? People like, you know, Chad Ellsworth and Suzanne Bernier. Um, Chad's coming up next. And all the speakers we're gonna hear today. Um, and honestly, honestly, people like you, right? Every one of you here. I mean, you're the reason I came here. You bring out the best in me. We're, you know, we all do that for each other. There's no strangers here. So, you know, keep mingling at the breaks, keep making connections, making plans, making friends. Come back to that image, right? The hero enters the forest alone where there is no path? I don't think so. Right? If, we, if we keep making these connections, we don't have to enter that forest alone. Right? We can enter that forest together. Let's do that. Thank you. The Hero Roundtables are the global events that ask the question, what is a hero? You've just seen one hero talk, to find more and join the conversation, visit our website or social media.